Hi there, and welcome to Preparing for MTA Exam 98375, HTML5 Application Development Fundamentals. Uh, my name is uh, Christopher Harrison, and I'm very pleased to be joined today by uh, Rachel Jones, MCT extraordinaire. So Rachel, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, thank you, Christopher. Pleasure to be here with you and with our audience today. Uh, I am principal owner of a consulting business specializing in helping businesses transition to the latest software development technologies. As you mentioned, I'm also a Microsoft Certified Trainer. I have been doing that for about 20 years. And I have a specific passion helping individuals mm -hmm. enter into this great industry of ours. It's a great industry to be in. And of course, one of the ways to do that is to gain a certification. Absolutely, absolutely. And if you are taking that first step, MTA is a great place to, uh, to get started. And we'll get into that in just a couple of minutes. But real quick, just so you have a bit of background on myself, my name is uh, Christopher Harrison. I'm also a longtime MCT. Uh, I only um, uh, was an MCT for about 14 years, though. So, you know, a little less. Uh, but uh, in any event, I've actually been uh, dabbling with computers since my father brought home a uh, VIC-20. Uh, I uh, specialize in ASP.NET, uh, SharePoint, Office 365, and a little bit of SQL. And uh, very recently, I uh, came on board with uh, Microsoft Learning as a uh, content developer. And uh, just uh, very happy to, uh, to be here. So uh, with that, what do you say we uh, talk a little bit about, well, what we're going to talk about. Let's go ahead and introduce the, uh, the modules, the topics, and kind of set the stage for what it is that we're going to be covering over the next uh, couple, three hours here. Okay, sounds great. We have divided this course into six modules. Mm -hmm. We'll start off first with just laying out some basic expectations. This is going to be particularly helpful if you have never taken a Microsoft Certified exam before. Yep. Then we're going to break down each one of the objectives specifically related to this 98375 exam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we'll finish off in module six, just trying to tie it all together, summarizing it, and leaving you with some tips on how to prepare for the exam. Excellent, excellent. That sounds uh... Uh, that sounds perfect. Yeah. Now, as far as uh, expectations go, um, what we're expecting uh, is that you are an entry-level developer. Because after all, that's what the MTA itself is all about. And we'll get a little bit more into the MTA and kind of set all the different levels of certification that, uh, that Microsoft or that we offer. Um, but uh, in this particular case, the MTA designed for that entry-level developer, and that's really who we expect that, uh, that you are. This is also designed to supplement uh, courses or real-world experience that over the uh, bit of time that we're going to be talking, we don't expect anybody to be able to go from no knowledge of HTML5, CSS, JavaScript to being able to pass the exam, uh, that that just really wouldn't be possible. Yeah, I, I agree. So hopefully maybe this is supplementing a course that you're mm -hmm. currently taking, that you have already taken, or as, as Christopher said, a little bit of real-world experience. However, mm -hmm. we should probably mention, even if you don't meet those prerequisites, stick with us. Yep. We're going to be providing some additional links and resources as we go through that help, might help you fill some of those gaps. Absolutely, absolutely. So if you are brand new, yeah, absolutely stick with us because we are going to help point you in the right direction. And, and you'll certainly uh, pick up a few tips and tricks and, and get a really good uh, head start on, uh, on your uh, studying going forward. You know, we've been talking a lot, though, about... MTA, mm. certification, exams. Should we maybe mm -hmm. fill in our audience a little bit about what MTA is, how it fits in the, the track? Yeah, let's, let's do exactly that. Let's do exactly that. So let's talk a bit about the, uh, the exam, what the exam is all about, what MTA is all about, and uh, how everything kind of comes together. So MTA is designed to be that entry-level certification. Um, and in fact, the best thing really to do here, let me just bring up my mouse here and fire this up, is to bring up the, uh, the documentation straight from Microsoft. That right. one of the things that uh, I, I'm a big believer in is, you know, go straight to the source, go straight to, uh, to the horse's mouth and, and see everything stuff. right there, yeah. get the current stuff. And so what you'll see is that MTA is really designed for career changers, it's designed for students, it's designed for people who are trying to get those first couple of steps into building, hopefully, a very successful career inside of uh, technology uh, getting in with, uh, in this particular case, HTML5, CSS, and, uh, and JavaScript. So I'm going to okay. let you talk for a second here yeah. so I can get a drink so my sure. voice stays with us. Yeah, uh, men mentioning that, uh, one of the things that mm -hmm. I have recommended this exam for is I've had a few people, a few students over the years 
uh, attempt the 480 exam, which is the HTML exam right above this one. And they just weren't quite there yet, wasn't mm -hmm. successful, felt a little defeated. So I recommended go back to this one, start at this and build that confidence, get a certification under your belt, and then move forward. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah it's also kind of, I, I think, a great level set. It gives you the opportunity to see exactly where you are. If maybe you do need to take another step back and kind of uh, build back up again before going off and taking the, uh, the, the 480 exam. Now, the 480 exam that uh, Rachel mentions there is the beginning into MCSD or Microsoft Certified Solutions Developer. And that really is designed to be a premier certification, a higher level cert. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's designed for people that have been in the industry for a good handful of years and have a lot of, of experience with the product. So that's sort of the, the next big certification goal after achieving the, uh, the MTA. Right, good. Well, hopefully that helps put it in perspective yeah. for the audience. Yeah, exactly. So we'll kind of go right on in, then I'll let you save your voice for a minute there, Chris. Thank you very much. Uh, I like to call this first module the Alka-Seltzer module. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Yeah, because the idea is to help you alleviate a little bit of those testing jitters. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the whole idea is we're going to just lay out some basic expectations. We're going to look at things like how the exam is scored. Again, this is particularly helpful if you have not taken a Microsoft exam yep. before. We're going to look at what score you need to actually mm -hmm. pass the exam, how it's formatted, how are you going to register. And then last but not least, we want to make sure that you feel comfortable that this exam and this course is right for you. Absolutely. Yeah, one of the things I always like to say is that getting past a, a, an exam is basically like 50-50, um, not pass-fail, but rather it's 50% your knowledge and then 50% uh, your test-taking ability. So kind of knowing exactly what to expect as far as the experience goes, uh, about even just kind of the basics of, of, like Rachel said, how to register is going to go a long way in helping you feel more comfortable, more confident when you sit down to, uh, to take that exam. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's get, uh, yeah, let's let's get, get right into it. So if we take a look at, uh, at uh, Rachel's slides yeah. here, there we go, so, and uh, talk a little bit about how the exam itself is scored. Yeah, so the good news, hopefully it's going to be good news after you sit this course. That, is, that, that would be a good screenshot to see when you're done. Yeah, yeah. that's right. You're going to know if you were successful before you actually leave the testing center. Mm -hmm. You're going to get a score sheet that looks uh, similar to this. And hopefully, again, after sitting this course, you're going to see this <laughs> result, this pass result. Yep. On the right-hand side of your score sheet, you're also going to get a scaled score. And that's a score between 0 and 100. You're going to need, I believe it's 50, uh, 70, right? Correct. 70 or below, yep. up above, Christopher, to yep. get a passing score. That is correct. You know, the thing I love about Microsoft score sheets, and by the way, all of their certification score sheets look similar to this. You're going to get a breakdown right here that shows you how well you did, a graphical breakdown for each objective. Mm -hmm. I really like this feature. Yeah, because again, if, if you don't wind up, or even if you do wind up passing, but if you don't wind up passing the exam, you of course want to go back and take it again. Well, if you're going to take it again, you need to figure out, okay, well, what was I weak in? Where do I need to focus in on so that way I can make sure I've got uh, uh, better success the next time around? So if you take a look, and, and we'll kick back to Rachel's screen real quick, if you take a look at those bars down at the very bottom, it's relatively straightforward that the less that that bar is full is the the more that you need to focus in on that particular area, the more that that bar is full, uh, it's trying to indicate that uh, that you know that particular area really, uh, really well. Right. And I always like to mention this as well, is let's say that you do go in and, and, and you don't wind up passing the exam. Right. What happens? Well, it's, believe it or not, not the end of the word, right. world. That okay. you're going to see those four little letters, F-A-I-L, and that's it. I've, I've failed a, a few exams throughout my career. I'm sure you've done the same. And, yep. and each time that I did that, um, my, my wife didn't leave me. Um, my <laughs> dog didn't walk out. Uh, my car still worked. You know, my, my life didn't crumble around me. Certainly, yes, it was, it was disappointing, but it really was not as, it's not as, as scary as, as, as you think it might be. That, uh, that really, if you do wind up failing, it's okay. We've all been there. We've all done it. Mm -hmm. It's all about then just getting back in, figuring out, okay, where do I need to focus in on to, to study and, and pass the exam? And that's exactly what that score sheet is going to give you. Yeah, I think so. In fact, I, I would 
I would say that if you leave this entire course with one bit of information, the most important thing to keep in mind is uh, it's okay if yep. you don't pass the first time. Try again. You, tr you can try several times. And we're going to get into that a little bit further about the retake policy. So yep. stick with us on that. Yep. Let's talk a little bit about how the exam is actually formatted. Yep. For the most part, you're going to uh, have multiple choice type questions. You mm -hmm. may have a few true false and some matching, and that's going to be in the form of kind of a drag drop scenario with your mouse. Right. Yep. Here's the good news. You ready, Christopher? Okay, I'm ready for good news. I always like good news. Yeah. Don't have to write code. Okay. Don't have All to right. write code. That's really good news because this is a time test. You are mm -hmm. only going to have about 15 minutes to complete about 30 to 40 questions. So you can see not really a whole lot of time mm -hmm. to be sitting down churning out code. Right. I know you are the certification ninja, Christopher. <laughs> so I was wondering if you had any points about this mark for review feature, if you could tell us a little bit about what that is. And do you like it? Uh, sure, absolutely. So uh, mark rev for review is basically exactly like it sounds, is that you're allowed to mark a question uh, for review later on. That when you're going through the exam, what you'll notice to the uh, upper right-hand corner is a little checkbox, and it says exactly that, mark for review. And so that way, as you're going through the exam, you can go ahead and highlight, yes, you know, I want to go back to this question, or I want to go back to this question. And when you get to the very end, you'll then have the opportunity to step back and go back through those questions that, uh, that you marked uh, for, uh, for review. And that gives you an opportunity to take another look at that question and figure out, okay, well, maybe do I want to go in and, uh, and change the answer. Now, when it comes to mark for review, I like that for questions where either A, I'm not entirely sure that I know what the right answer is, or B, for questions that are overly complex. That one, one of my basic uh, test strategies is to make the easy questions easy, and then that way I have a bit more time to spend with the hard questions. Yeah. So if I know what the answer is, I'm just going to mark the answer and I'm just going to move on from there. But if I'm you know, not 100% certain and I'm just staring at this question and I'm trying to figure out, okay, well, what in the world are they talking about here? Rather than focusing in on that question for five minutes, I'm just going to mark an answer and then I'm going to mark it for review, and then I'll go back to it later on. And that way, I know that I've gotten through the exam. I'm sort of into my bonus time as it works. I, I know I've already got every, an answer on every question. So now, if I wind up running out of time, I know at the very least, every question's been answered. So I can spend a little bit more time with those types of questions. Now, again, it's a good opportunity to go back and take a look at things, but I'm also going to contradict myself. Because... Okay you got to be very careful about going back and changing uh, an answer. So Agreed. let's say that I wasn't 100% certain, so I marked an answer, and I went back and I reviewed the question later, and I'm looking at it, and I'm looking at it, and I'm looking at it, and I decide, you know, I really don't think I was right the first time. I'm going to go in and change that answer. Be very careful. I, I, if I had a nickel for every time I changed an answer later, and then realized, oh, wait a minute, no, I was right the first time, I'd be able to take my wife out for a very nice mm -hmm. dinner. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and you're saying use it, but use it with caution. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Be very careful about it, because nine times out of ten, that first instinct is correct. Whatever it is that you thought was the right answer, chances are that was the right answer. So be very careful about it. Not to say don't do it. Right. Not to say don't mark for review because it's a very powerful test-taking tool, but just be a bit careful about going back and changing your answers later on. Okay. I think that's yeah. really good advice. Yeah, before we move off of this slide, though, yeah. I, do want to, I don't want to mislead our audience. I did say that you didn't have to write code, mm -hmm. but be sure to know that you may have to actually do a little evaluation of code. Yes. So as an example, you might actually have a multiple choice question. Mm -hmm some scenario and be given four options of which code would actually, and it's just little snippets of code, would fit best for that particular yep. scenario. So we were going to get into coding a little bit later, So, uh, but just know that you don't have to write it, but you will have to do some code evaluation. Absolutely, yeah. Because after all, it's a, it's a coding exam, so you should definitely expect to see some code yes. on the exam. It makes sense. Let's talk a little bit about how to, to register for the exam. Yeah. First off, if you are currently a student, and that could be at a university, at a college, even at a high school level, the first thing that you're going to do is check with your site administrator. Chances are you might be